Eevee, come back to me! Yo, what's up everyone? Trayman1 here and welcome back to another Pokemon Journeys anime review, guys. Today we are covering episode 79, Chloe and her twin, Umbreon and Espeon. So this is a very interesting episode. To be honest, I actually was not excited for this episode at all. Like, I don't know, the whole plot of us introducing the evolutions, that's cool, but the way they're doing it, like, oh, let's see these evolutions. Do you want to evolve into this one? We know it's not going to evolve into this one. <laughs> They did a little bit better with this episode than the Vaporeon episode, so let's go and get right into it. So after the events of Spider-Man No Way Home, we get to see that Doctor Strange opens up the multiverse, bringing in villains and possibly other Spider-Mans from alternate universes. Little did he know that he ended up bringing Chloe from the AU movie series over to our universe, and these two Chloe's me. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. That actually would have been a cool plot, though. I can't even lie. But yeah, Chloe and Evie go to the Jota region because they want to see this crowning of this new queen. And basically, while they're there, they end up running into... Basically, Chloe's doppelganger, who has Umbreon and Espeon. She gets to show, you know, how both her Eevees evolve, which the way that the Espeon happened, it's like, oh, yeah, you almost fell. I saved you. Evolve. I was like, what? Meanwhile, you know, Umbreon made a bit more sense. You know, it battled. But still, that was pretty cool to show off the night and day aspect. They didn't really push too hard on Eevee trying to evolve into these forms like they did with Vaporeon, which was pretty cool. But still, we know that's the main purpose of this episode. And to be honest, the first half of this episode was pretty slow. Not much was going on. You know, they were just kind of explaining the lore. But this lore did lead to something bigger later, which I did like the scene. But, you know, I kind of wish they did it better. Basically, there's this ninja who actually wanted the throne. You know, he's supposed to have a part in the throne. It was related to the Chloe doppelganger. And so Chloe... And her doppelganger end up switching basically outfits. He mistakes the doppelganger to be the queen, and that's why he takes her instead of you know the doppelganger. I know this sounds really confusing, guys, but I'm talking about Chloe two. We're gonna call it Chloe one and Chloe two. <laughs> Chloe one ends up getting taken away, but then when the ninja finds out that he stole the wrong Chloe, he ends up trying to attack, and it's like you know I'll free Chloe if you give me the throne. This scene right here is where I kind of have an issue. I, I do love the stakes. I love that they actually have a more serious villain in this episode compared to last week's. But at the same time, all of these people, all of these people, Chloe literally has her Pokemon. You know, there's the grandma there. I'm pretty sure she has a good couple of Pokemon on her too. They could take this guy out with ease. At the time, he only had this Noctowl out. And I'm pretty sure like, oh, Noctowl, that's not too menacing. Maybe if he had brought out all his Pokemon, the Ursaring, the area those so maybe if he had a couple more i feel like it had like some more stakes you know had them more endangered like don't move a muscle or i'll attack like i think that would have been a much more bigger scene for her to really know this guy means no joke and that you know she should give up the throne but the way they all were just kind of casually standing there she was about to say it i don't know that that wasn't really a nice scene in my opinion you're telling me all these people in the crowd nobody wanted to help they all just sitting there watching this yeah i wasn't a big fan of this but I do love that Chloe and Evie do get them a nice moment. Obviously, Evie does what it does, and that's copycatting, which is this is kind of getting a little old in my opinion. Like I hope that every evolution episode isn't just they meet the evolution, they show how it evolves, Evie copies something from them. Like unless this, you know, at least a bit more, they make spice it up a little bit. You know, this is Umbreon. Gary has an Umbreon. That could have been cool if we had an episode with Chloe and Gary with Umbreon and maybe some other person with an Espeon. Yeah, but. I would love to see them implement that for Glaceon, Sylveon, you know, have, have characters return. That would spice it up. These would, for what we have a better connection with these characters than these character of the days that we're never going to see again. Yeah, she looks like Chloe, but this is not our Chloe. And so that's why all of this, you know, it's cool. It's a good episode. It's a nice plot, but it doesn't mean much for the future story. Overall, I rate this episode a solid 5 out of 10. This is kind of a weaker Chloe-focused episode. You know, one of my favorites, even though she didn't catch it, was the Pony to one because I really did like how they portrayed Chloe and Evie in that episode. But these little Evie Lucian ones, I feel like they could do a bit better. Maybe make them spice them up somehow, some way, or who knows, even just do it all in one episode where maybe 
or not even just one episode, a two-parter where we get to see all of these evolutions at once somehow. And this is where Chloe finally gets to decide. Maybe at the end of the episode, she gets to G Max. Who knows? Something a bit more original. And yeah, even though Evie did get this little sun and moon thing, we're never going to see this thing again. Let's be honest. So that's my rating for this episode. In the comment section down below, let me know what y'all thought of this episode. I'd love to hear. Thank you all for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Trade me one. Peace out.